I've done a variety of things in my life, even though I knew right from the age of six that all I wanted to do was write down stories for people to read and enjoy and retell. I wrote my first story when I was six, uh, my second one when I was about 10. Um, my first short story came out in a children's newspaper by the time I was 13 or 14. And you know, it, it's the same with anyone who really wants to write and that's all they want to do. But when we were growing up, um, and I think it's true even today, whether we like it or not, there was this pressure to do the standard thing. And in my case, the standard thing was uh, school, college, preferably a degree in something like economics or statistics. Then I got through to MBA uh, in a fairly prestigious institute. So, you know, doing that. Then almost by default, getting into the corporate job, that thing. So the first time, the first time I decided, no, this is not going to be my path, I was in London. And I was in a room full of young children like you. And they were inspiring enough for me to say, I'm going to stop this. Um, and I'm going to start teaching, which was my other love and remains my other love. I taught for eight years, um, came back to India, and then started writing my book, which became books. And uh, I got published, started talking to people. Went back to corporate life for a bit. Um, it's very interesting to compare and contrast when you're on a certain path. And right now, I'm in this interesting mix of uh, working a bit, writing a bit, speaking a bit, interviewing a bit, just the way I like it. So living a creative life is really a bit like a marathon, not so much a sprint. You've got to have lots of patience. You've got to know sort of where you're headed. You don't have to know the final destination. And you've got to be flexible to everything that life throws you away. We've talked about myself. Actually, the result of scientific studies. So when I put it out there, there actually have been experiments where people have been asked to you know, produce a lot of quantity. And some people have been asked to do high quality work. And it turns out that people who've done a lot of quantity work actually are also the people who turn out high quality work at the end of the day. Um, a little word about where we are on consuming today. So there was a time when we had to work very hard to consume, to even put food in your mouth. You had to really, really, really go out and hunt or go out and farm, work hard all day. It's really not the case anymore with us. Consuming food, consuming clothing, consuming free time, has all become ridiculously easy for all of us. We don't you know, work very hard at cultivating food. We don't work very hard at weaving our own clothes. So we have a lot of this free time in the industrial age, you know, from the industrial age onwards, and now in the digital age, even more so. Everything is very, very fast. What that does is give us a lot of free time. And what do we do with that time? We consume social media, uh, films, stuff on the phone, WhatsApp, um, so much so that the free time that we had, and you would have thought that that free time could be used for creating, it's really not. It's for Netflix, by and large, or Amazon Prime, or anything else to stop you from creating your own thing. And that's a bit of a problem because just as our bodies were meant to move, and most doctors will tell you that if you are sitting still for 20 minutes or more, chances are your body is suffering because your body is designed for movement. Your mind is designed to create. So if you only consume at some point in time, your mind will rebel. So excessive TV watching, for example, leads to depression, and it's a fairly well-established link. So how do we how do we get out of this cycle? We consume mindfully, as I said. So most people say, you know, you're a writer. Reading is consumption. Would you say reading is bad? 
Absolutely not. Please do read. Do read widely. It will inform you. It will help you think through things better. But eventually, bring it back. Bring back the cycle to creating, which means write your own stuff. Otherwise, you are only consuming. Otherwise, it's a loop that will probably make you unhappy. Now, a personal journey into creativity showed me something very, very important about myself. That as I got more creative, as I got into the life of uh, becoming a creative person, I definitely got more confident. But on the other hand, had I not been at least a little bit confident to begin with, I probably would not have started writing. So it's a bit of a cycle when we start. You do need a bit of confidence to explore ideas, to say you need a bit of that sense of self. Many people, especially in teenage, when we're all kind of discovering ourselves, we sit and think, but you know, I'm not like that. I don't really know. I mean, where do I start? I don't really feel confident. I don't know what you're talking about, Yash. So please remember that one of the first things a lot of creative artists have in common. And I could name people like Lady Gaga. I could name John Lennon. I could name Meryl Streep. Um, three people who come to mind have suffered from low self-confidence, low self-esteem, bullying, trauma, feeling like they're quite worthless. And then they've been phenomenal creators. So how does that work? How that works is, your doubt, your sense of, you know, I don't know if I can do it. It can only be healed if you start creating. At this stage, perhaps you don't have to show it to anybody. You just create for yourself. And the more you create, the more confident you get. The more confident you get, chances are you'll produce more stuff. But then some of it may not be up to your internal standard, may bring to some doubt. When in doubt, create again. So most of us, we break the creative cycle when we have doubt because we stop. The trick is, don't stop. Um, there is a concept called beginner's mind. Um, when we do something just as a beginner, when we don't know anything, it's great. Because you're just playing, because there are no expectations, you don't have any any thoughts about how it should be. You're just exploring. And that is what, when people have created stuff, they want to get back to. They want to get back to that sense of play and wonder. Because you, know, you only have it when you're a beginner. So the trick is to try and keep the beginner's mind going along with the new stuff that you learn. The second thing, this thing that I talked about, it's got a name, the imposter syndrome. You could be successful and big and you know really doing fabulous stuff and you could get up on stage and think, what am I doing here? I don't belong here. My book isn't as good. My films are probably rubbish and one day these kids will find out and they'll think I'm this big fat fraud. And that's very normal. Albert Einstein suffered from imposter syndrome and he was Albert Einstein. So, this is something lots of people live with. Don't be alarmed by it, accept it. Just remember whenever you have a crisis of confidence and you're getting down to do something creative, you are in it to play. You may win, you may not win. But the most important thing is to just play. Yeah. Now, I am an introvert. You, know, you put me in a room full of people, ideally, Give me a book to go with it, and I'm kind of, I'm reassured. But even if I don't open the book, I know that if it's all gets, it's, you know, it's too overwhelming, I can sit in a corner, open a book, and, um, you know, all will be well. Not everyone is. Lots of people are extroverts. Um, and incidentally, both introverts and extroverts can be creative. So I remember when I wrote my first set of books and I was meeting a few authors and I said, don't you think solo time is just about the most important thing? Don't you think like there are just too many people? I don't think I always want to meet people. And he said, what do you mean? He was an extrovert. He said, no, 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 no. That's not how it works. I have to meet people all the time. So it 
is very much a personality thing, but broadly speaking, you do need to meet some people, you do need some stimuli, you, because that is where your ideas will come from eventually. But when you are actually in the act of creating for those whatever, four hours, five hours, maybe 15 minutes a day, you have to be on your own, you have to not be distracted, you have to allow your mind to create. So it's cyclical and how often you get social and how often you get unsocial depends on who you are as a person. But both are important, going outside, meeting the external world, getting stimulated by a room full of people, and then going back and letting it feed into your work. Here's the boring part. If you follow a timetable and a routine, and if you have a structure for yourself, chances are you will be highly creative. How do I know? I know because for two and a half years, every day, um, at about 7.30, till about 7.30 to 10, I sat at my desk and I would write. And because I sat at my every desk every day and because I would write, better ideas started coming. I don't know how it works. Maybe, as scientists say, these networks start operating more efficiently. But the more regular you are, the better your ideas get. The less regular you are with whatever it is, whether it's singing or dancing um, or writing, the worse your ideas get and eventually they dry up. How do I know that? The thing with routine is, routine makes things easier. If you're a gymmer and you go to the gym, you probably know this. As and when you practice more, it's just easier. As and when you write more, it gets easier. So. People wonder if the creative activity is um, very different from something that is essentially physical like running or jogging. And it isn't. Uh, every part of our body and the mind or our brain is a part of our body. It responds very well to practice. It gets better, gets more efficient. So one of my idols, this writer called Philip Pullman, he said this wonderful thing. And I have it over my desk uh, on a little printout. So when I feel lazy, I look at it. It says, work every day. Get into the habit of it. Work when you don't feel like it. When you've just broken up with your girlfriend or boyfriend. When you're feeling ill. When you've got homework. Put your work first. Habit is your greatest ally. Get into the habit of writing when you're young and it'll stay with you. And then, because he was talking to somebody who's 16 years old, he said 16 is a very good age to start. I think 11 is too. Um, the other thing he says, and I love to say this, he said, you know, only writers, because they have these, this ability to think up words, have talked about something called writer's block. Plumbers don't have plumber's block. Carpenters don't have carpenter's block. Um, but because we writers are so very good with words, We've come up with a really fancy sounding excuse. I'm really glad I'm talking to a young audience because younger people are less scared of things. They're happier to play and to try new things and that's great. But the older you get, there are all sorts of things to be afraid about suddenly when you uh, you know, want to get creative. People are very happy to jump upside down. They, I think they call it bungee jumping from God knows where and, uh, you know, paraglide into thin air. But you ask them to sit down and write a page and they're suddenly, you know, really, really busy. <laughs> so how do you get over that fear? Um, well, the first thing is it's all right when you start and in my case, when you start telling a story, in someone's case, when you're thinking of an idea, it's all right to just know the first couple of steps and not know the rest. Um, it's like walking with a torch in the dark. And, you know, you do a little bit and you somehow know that the torch will light the path. And if you're taking the next step, the next path will, you know, it just gets clearer and clearer. And it's, well, that's one very good way 
to explain the process to yourself and to not be scared and say, you know, but I don't know the whole plot. I don't know the whole thing. It doesn't matter. Most likely, many of the fantastic stories you read, people don't know the whole thing. They didn't when they started. The next thing is I find um, people who judge us, and that includes ourselves, it's very, very, very important to not allow them anywhere close to our creative process. So when you're first starting something, when you're first starting out, start with yourself. Don't sit and think, oh, this is rubbish, or this is good, or this is whatever. Just do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, get it out. Get enough stuff out. Automatically, you'll get a sense of what is working, what's not working. When you have to select and put things into place, that's when maybe you get your inner judge out a little bit. Also, ideally, don't show your work to people. Uh, definitely not a lot of people. I have a lot of young writers coming and saying, is this good, is that bad? And I always kind of send them back gently because whatever I say will be damaging. It will make people dependent on my good opinion to do their thing. Creativity is your thing. It doesn't matter what anyone else says, thinks, or does. You just go about doing it. Yeah? So it's best, I find, not to ask for an opinion. When you finally you know, submit it to a, a publisher or somebody who evaluates the project and says, you know, this is good enough to, for us to go through and make it bigger, whatever, that's a separate issue. You take that person's feedback, but don't show it to everybody. Because most of these people don't create. They'll derail you. And you'll be dependent on their good opinion, and you think it matters, and it'll stop your work. Don't risk it. Time. You've got to be a little bit strict about the time you factor for yourself, because otherwise, there's always, hey, time for cricket. Oh, why don't you come down for roller skating? I thought we had a luncheon party or whatever. So if you have a certain set time, stick to it. Be honest about it. Work in that time. Don't faff. That's going to help. One more thing that no one told me, and I hate exercising, I hate it. If your back goes, turns out, you can't think. So exercise and good health is extremely important because it's only when you don't have pain, you're absolutely fit and fine, or more or less fit and fine, that you can sit and fully concentrate on another task for hours on end. Pain can be, well, it can ruin your concentration for one thing. People, um, if you consistently find yourself with people who discourage you from pursuing a creative path in life and you've chosen that path, avoid those people. They probably don't get you. Try and meet more people who have made it a life path. Finances, very unromantic. But it's true that most creative people are either self-employed or entrepreneurs. And most of them don't really know um, how long they'll be doing what they're doing because projects end, you start on something else. So it's important to, be, to understand personal finance, to be a little bit disciplined. It's important to consume less and create more. Just helps. So try and understand personal finances. If you're going to be in it for the long haul, for, the, you know, for a lifelong thing, you will need to figure out, apart from the first two that we talk about, these four, less romantic, but extremely important if you want to sustain. OK. So also, um, a very common thing for uh, many of us who write or who sing or who dance or make films is people saying, oh, my child has done this. Will you come and launch this and launch that? And once again, um, in many, many interviews, I get asked, you know, how do I get famous? The thing is, that's not how you start doing anything. Fame is at the very best a byproduct of the book you've written, the film you've made, the dance you've danced, the song you've sung, or anything else you may have composed. Money, similarly, is a byproduct. 
it's important to look at them that way. Otherwise, if someday, let's say, something doesn't make you famous, you'll stop being creative. And that's sort of not what this is about. So creativity will give you identity, yes. It'll give you a very strong sense of self and who you are. It'll tell you uh, to yourself what you do, um, what sings to you. But it will not necessarily make you famous by default. It may happen, may not happen. Most people who are creative in the long haul and also therefore very successful are people who are in it for the joy of it. You're there for the joy of making something, um, telling a really good story. And that's why you're there and everything else kind of happens later. And fame is one of those things that kind of just happens later as you keep doing it. Please understand that most of us creative artists, whether we are sitting here in a room and giving a TED talk, or whether you're performing on a really, really nice international stage, or whether you're on the street making a little thing with your um, potter's wheel, you belong to the same fraternity, you belong to the same world, you belong to the same community. So whenever you can, please help. You can help by buying, you can help by giving money to causes, but you can always also help with your time, your expertise. If you're a designer and you feel you can help another artisan in a village, please give your time. We are all part of one world. I have a system where if I go to a place, I make sure I get something that is made by an artisan or a craftsperson in that place. If I live in a city, I make sure I patronize a local artist in that city. If I've ever been to any city, like I, I grew up for five years in Rajasthan, I was just telling your principal, I always make sure I come back and buy something from Rajasthan as often as I can because here is a creative community that in some way inspired me to become who I am today. And it's extremely important to give back to that community. The last thing, quantity really helps. You want to be a lifelong creator, just create, 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 create. The good work will just happen automatically. Thank you very much. <laughs>